Hello there. I'm a different narrator from what you have experienced with before, who told you a bit about Terrip's story. Sadly, he didn't take it serious. I feel kinda sad for what happened to Iria and her little child. Yes, I'm here to tell you about Terrip in detail, about the countries and the landscape. First, we take a good look on the map of Terrip. As you see, it is kinda different from a regular map. All this had been surrounded by water, which now have been dried out after that incident. And now, all that is left is an ocean of sand. Terrahypt had been built by three mages, Asphalgars, Argol, and Egnia. Argol made it possible for the continent to move around and avoid threats, like asteroid belts and other hazards. He also made an artificial sun to sustain all the flora, which had been Egnia's task to breed up, as well as animals. And then Asvalgars had made a gravitational field that surrounds Terrahypt, so everything won't float away, as well as an atmospheric barrier for everyone to breathe. So, if I'm going to go through all the countries on Terrahypt smoothly, I will be going in this order. See? So, the first country on the list that I would like to tell a bit about is Jaden, a vivid green country. It has deep canyons with lakes at the bottom. And the rest are high plateaus covered with uh, ancient primal forests. And the most ancient of them all is Hycia Peninsula. Many does not know what lies deep within it. Since there are many travelers whom have never returned after entering the forest. The capital of Jaden is Jadrion. <laughs> that city is like a giant garden where almost every building is covered with plants. Well, the next country is Bobulus Province. It looks like a typical desert, but the sand grains are considerably bigger. Even bigger than Gravel. Well, it depends on where you look. The closer to the impact crater where Iria died, the bigger the grains get. Here you have sand, here you have gravel, here you have rocks, here you have boulders, and here you have cliffs that have broken away together with the land flow that comes from the crater. Bobulus Province is like a waterfall where everything flows out into the great desert and then slowly disappears into the core again, where it gets fused together by the radiation from the impact site, and then the process repeats. The capital is Balcoran, where King Bobulus lives. <laughs> He's an ogre with a huge hammer. That city is an enormous boat that floats on the flowing sand, with huge paddle wheels that prevents it from flowing with it. The next counter in line is Haran, a desert peninsula. That counter is known to be the home of many traders and industrialists. That country have a capital, but it's not visible on the map because it's not one of the five world capitals. That city is almost like Balcoran, but on wheels. It is a very famous city because it had been nearly created, and for its appearance, it is truly an amazing machine. Its name is Levithan, and it travels all around Terrahypt, also acting like a trading vessel. The next country is Anod. The country is mostly based of dry landscape with forests. It is a pretty neutral country with not so many special aspects, but the capital is known for being the leading city when it comes to weapon industry, and it's heavily guarded. The next country is Maedrak. It's similar to Anod, but it's a home to many thieves and pirates. It has no given capital because there are four clans that rule this country through wars and battles. And then we have Mevi a country that is ruled by the ruthless military corporation Mavnav, which is a shorter name of Mevi Navy. They are marauders that causes disorder around Terrahypt, and the capital Kakrius is the second largest city in Terrahypt, <coughs> which is Mavnav's homeworld. It's a beehive full of thugs, assassins, and villains. But then we come to Levia. It is significantly peacefuler than Mevi because it is under the protection of the capital city Locrius. <coughs> Locrius is a high-tech city that brings order and protects all of Terrahypt with reliable robotic machines that patrols the areas in it. And Locrius has a great export of priceless gadgets and vehicles that is being used all around Terrahypt. And then we come to Phasmia, a beautiful country in all means. It is like a national park of Terrahypt, with all kinds of different wonders and places, like Angel Ridge, Sunlight Plains, Phantom Sea, Vortex Swamp, and the Wisplands. And close to Phasmia, we have Ternai, a forest that is like Hycia and Jaden, but bigger, deeper, and more mysterious. It is being told that in the heart of Ternai, everything evolves so fast that it appears almost frightening. And above Phasmia, we have Kaikos, 
priced to be the most beautiful and principal country of Terahypt. A rocky place where there actually are cliffs that float. The capital is Akrinua, a true wonder itself. Hollowed out of a massive tree where every house and building is carved and decorated by hand. Above Kaikas we have Raidian, a volcanic land. There's no settlements there, but it is a good attraction for spectators. And underneath we have Thiet, a place where all the winds above storm level ends up. There is no other wind that have ever traveled faster than storm level outside Thiet. It is a huge maelstrom of wind that have remained in the same place since the beginning. And now we come to Athenius, the biggest country on Terebt. It is based of three parts, Eastern Athenius, Western Athenius, and the Desolate Plains. In the middle, we have the crater from that terrible incident that ruptured the whole planet from the inside. And here's a detail that the green narrator have not told you. The meteorite that struck Aeria plunged her through the ground and into a huge cave underneath the surface. And now, there is a huge hole in the ground leading to the underworld Kirvia that stretches out in a vast networks of caves and passages under the terahyptic surface. And back to Athenius, we have the capital, which is also the capital of Terahypt, Aethecreus. <laughs> this enormous metropolis is similar to Locrius, but it's peacefuler and looks very futuristic. In the middle of Aethecreus, we have the Tower of Asphalgars, a three-mile-high tower where a very powerful mage lives, one of the mages who participated in the creation of Terahypt. And now we go up and see a fortress with a door see? that leads into the tallest mountain on Terahypt, Tigbalor. Inside that mountain dwells a mage that have been exiled from all his evil deeds, an warlock with the name Rutulus. With all that hatred to every living thing, it have engorged the mountain with darkness, which have caused a black cloud to rise from the rock and cover the skies of all the landscape behind the mountain and thus have given the covered counter behind it the name Dark Kagan, a former peaceful counter with green hills and valleys. When we continue up, we see that the cloud now ends, and a dark mountain landscape appears. That's Korsudra, a cursed landscape full of monstrosities that lurks in the shady depths at the bottom of the razor sharp mountains. And when we continue up, we come across the gloomy plains of Daedon, Similar to Jaden, but Jaden is a country with dead forests and haunted swamps. If you try to travel through these areas, there's no telling of what kind of evil that will fall upon you. And after we have passed all the countries on Terahypt, we at last come to the Spire, where Terahypt is being controlled by Argal, the mage that is responsible for all the machinery that is moving and keeping the whole continent alive. And that, my friends, is all.